So Chris, don't forget to talk about the new sensor. Jordan, nine out of 10 deep review subscribers just want to hear about the autofocus joystick improvement. Oh yeah. Well, you gotta yeah. talk about the new 4K video at least. Nine out of 10 YouTube subscribers have told me personally they only want to know about, does this have an AF joystick? Well, great, uh, it has an AF joystick. I guess we don't have to talk about it anymore. Oh baby, does it ever. Welcome back Deep Review TV viewers, Chris Nichols here and it has been a year and a half since we've been working for Deep Review and now finally this is actually the first enthusiast level SLR that we've really taken a good look at. But really it kind of begs the question, is there still a place for SLRs in today's world? Well, let's find out today. So of course we did already talk about the US 90D in Atlanta as sort of an early first look and definitely refer to that video for a lot of the stuff that we're talking about. Do keep in mind that it really is a split personality camera because you've got both an excellent SLR interface as well as a very usable mirrorless interface. So I really want to approach today's video from that standpoint. There's also some very weird stuff going on here with video because this camera does a lot more than you might think in an SLR platform. Do you know what time it is? It's puddle time. is in my shot. With the Canon EOS 90D body, uh, you know, being an SLR, I love the grip, I love the feel of it. It's actually not that heavy, although keep in mind, people are going to make connections to the Canon EOS M6 Mark II, and this camera is almost twice as heavy as that kit. But it makes sense. It's weather sealed, it's rugged, it's got a good solid feel to it. I love the way it handles. Again, we are talking about one card slot on this particular camera. Remember, this is an enthusiast level camera, and that is also why the buttons and dials, although very effective, they work just fine, still have a cheaper feel. This doesn't have the solid feel of a Canon 7D Mark II or you know one of the full 1D bodies, of course, but when you get past that, it's actually a very ergonomically well-designed body. Now, if you are looking for a good reason to buy the Canon EOS 90D over, say, the M6 Mark II, battery life is a big one. Now with that LPE6, you're getting a SEPA rating of 1300 shots when you use the OVF. If you're shooting off the back LCD the whole time though, then you're looking at 450 shots. It's a lot less, but it's still a lot more than most other mirrorless cameras at this price point. It certainly is a lot more battery life, the Canon EOS M6 Mark II with its smaller battery. The big change on this camera, brand new sensor, 32.5 megapixels of resolution. This is a big step up. And again, just like we talked about with our M6 Mark II review, this sensor seems to be giving you extra resolution without costing you any dynamic range or low light performance. Now cramming over 32 megapixels and into an APS-C size sensor is a lot in a small space. And so just like we said with the M6 Mark II video, you might have to be choosy about what lenses you're going to use to get full advantage out of that 32 plus megapixels megapixels. Now I want to make this clear because we've got a lot of questions about this. That isn't to say that if you use lenses that aren't quite able to maximize that full 32 megapixels of resolution that you're not going to get good results. Those lenses will perform at the best of their capabilities but if you really want to see maximum detail out of this sensor you will have to look at lenses that will give you that. Now because this is an EF platform, you've got tons of lens choices. Lots of great EF lenses like this 24 to 70 28 that I've got on here for example, and tons of third party support as well. So unlike the M series cameras, you're not going to use an adapter, you're just going to get to throw them straight on. You probably already have some lenses at home that'll work fine if you're a Canon user. Now the Canon EOS 80D was a very popular vlogging camera, but the 90D takes us into vlogging beast mode. This is by far the best vlogging Canon SLR they've made to date, and for a lot of good reasons. First off, of course, you're watching me in 4K uncropped footage, so I get that resolution, but I get the glorious wide angle that this EFS 10 to 18 is providing right now. We also get an awesome touch screen. I can see it on the screen here as I'm vlogging. I can touch on my face, and that kicks in very effective dual pixel autofocus with excellent eye detect. This is the other big benefit. So as I'm vlogging, I can change my, my distance, no problems at all. I know that it's going to focus on my face very, very effectively. 
If I had to pick any downsides on this camera, it's still going to come down to audio. Canon's preamps aren't the best. I mean, I'm running this mic, Sennheiser ME2 capsule, just over 25% probably going to get a little bit of hum, but at least we do get a headphone jack. The mic input is in front of my screen. It's a little bit annoying, but with that dual pixel AF, as long as I keep it roughly framed, I know that it's going to keep focus. All in all, a very awesome experience. When it comes to dynamic range on this new sensor, I would say we're getting very similar to what we had on the older sensors, maybe a little bit better, but what we are getting is a big resolution bump. So getting those extra megapixels without sacrificing DR or even improving on it just a little bit is a nice thing. I can boost shadows here, does a pretty decent job. Overall, a nice improvement for Canon. So this does now shoot 1 8,000th of a second as its maximum shutter speed. Another thing that it does is actually has a smaller spot AF point when you're shooting through the OVF. So that's really nice if you're trying to get that pinpoint focus on the eye using the optical viewfinder, because of course you don't get any sort of eye autofocus assistance through the optical viewfinder. Another interesting thing about this, the 90D now has the option when you're shooting in live view to go from electronic front curtain, which is its normal mode, to a fully mechanical mode. Now what this should do is help to avoid some of the lag that you're going to get when you're trying to track a moving subject, but it does mean you're going to get a little bit more shutter shock through the body. Now what if you want to look at the 90D as a wildlife camera but at a more affordable price point than some of the bigger cameras? Well you're going to love the new sensor, right? it's going to do a good job, give you a little bit more cropping potential, and this camera does now have a bump up over the 80D as far as speed goes. It can shoot from now 7 frames per second to 10 frames per second, so that's a nice improvement. The buffer is not bad, you know, if I'm shooting RAW plus JPEG, in compressed RAW I'm getting about 24 shots, if I go to JPEG only I'm getting over 30, so it's not bad, but that feels up quick and the buffer clears at a moderate speed. However, it's also the autofocusing system being the more classic 45 point autofocusing type. It would have been really awesome to see the 7D Mark II's autofocusing system in here that would certainly have brought more value for the dollar in this camera. But the real question is, if I'm shooting 10 frames per second with this 45 point type autofocusing system, can it keep up at that high frame rate? Let's go find out. Okay, so here's the lowdown on autofocus performance. First off, when you're shooting through the optical viewfinder. One of the new features that they're advertising on this 45 point AF system is it can now track with face detection. And so we tested that here with Jordan, having subjects in the autofocus auto area mode in front of Jordan. And you can see that often it will choose his face. As he moves around, it does follow, but sometimes it goes to the background, sometimes it still goes to the foreground. So it's an okay feature, but it's just not consistent enough to trust. And I still think that I would go back to a zone or a single point and just try to focus that way through the viewfinder. But what about this 10 frame per second performance? It is certainly impressive and the camera is tracking autofocus, but as you can see here, the results are just not very good. It just can't seem to keep up with fast action moving towards the camera. Now when I do go to the low speed continuous mode, now the camera can keep up and do a very good job, but we're not getting that blisteringly fast performance that we were hoping for through the optical viewfinder. Now we're going to talk next about live view and that's a big difference. So when you're using the optical viewfinder, the 90D shoots a lot like a slightly improved 80D. It's basically the same experience. But when I go into live view, this becomes a totally different camera. Now I get 10 frames per second with autofocus tracking and it works very, very well. I can touch anywhere on the screen and lock my subject. It will track it. It does a great job tracking not just the face, but the eyes as well. These are all vast improvements over the autofocus experience through the optical viewfinder. And that becomes the real issue. Now I find that I want to use this camera kind of like a mirrorless camera and it's just not well suited to that. Here's another issue though with that viewfinder. Uh, I'm getting older, I'm going to hit 40 this year and honestly my eyes just aren't what they used to be. So holding the camera here, I got to get it out here now to actually see what I'm doing. And that is sad and unfortunate for me. Having that optical viewfinder with the diopter, I'm finding that more and more helpful. Or do I just go to an M6 Mark II and get the best of both worlds? Now the ES90D has a lot going for it when shooting in live view. However, I do want to say that the optical viewfinder on this camera for an enthusiast level camera is excellent. 100% coverage, 0.95 magnification, decent eye relief, it's bright, it's sharp. And the back LCD on this when shooting in live view, it's a TFT, just over a million dots. Even max brightness cranked, it's still pretty hard to see it on sunny bright days like this. So 
I really often find myself going back to the OVF just so I can frame properly and be confident of my shot, even though shooting in live view gives me much better autofocus capabilities. Okay, so it's Jordan to talk about video on the 90D. And as Chris has already said, this is really Canon's best vlogging DSLR in both of our opinion. But let's suppose you're someone who's not a vlogger and you're looking at this more in terms of the actual image quality on it. Well, we've already looked at the M6 Mark II and you can see our entire Atlanta video was shot on this camera and one thing really stood out to me. If we're using its full readout, then unfortunately it is very soft. If you jump it over to 1080p video, it's quite usable. And if you jump over to 120 frames per second, you're actually gonna lose the dual pixel autofocus as soon as you start recording. So some of the great usability of this camera is missing. The weird thing that stands out to me is a DSLR is inherently a worse format for recording video than a mirrorless camera. But for some reason, the 90D gets more video features than the M6 Mark II. I don't get Canon's logic. So as we reflect on the duality of the Canon EOS 90D, it really brings up an important question. What is this Canon EOS 90D trying to be? Is it an upgraded 80D, new sensor, and uh, you know, great video capabilities? Yes, absolutely. Is it an M6 Mark II with uh, worse autofocus performance through the viewfinder? That's a pretty pessimistic way to look at it, but yeah, you could say that too. And so really I think my finding is this is an SLR and that's why you want to buy it because you want that optical viewfinder experience. In that regard, it's actually a really enjoyable camera to use. But if you find that you're really digging the dual pixel autofocus and that's the way you want to go, you might as well get a Canon EOS M6 Mark II. You get the same great sensor, that camera's more compact, it's faster shooting, and you get that awesome autofocus whether using the electrical viewfinder or the back screen. Keep in mind another real compelling reason to go for this camera, oddly enough, its video capabilities are pretty amazing and I think overall as an SLR package this camera actually gives you something more compelling than cameras like the Nikon D7500 for example. So is this a last grade SLR? I don't know, that's a tough question to answer but it's a fantastic capable SLR package to use if you dig the whole SLR way of shooting. I hope that helps you make your decision. Don't forget, please subscribe. Check out our Instagram and our Twitters. Don't forget to leave comments below. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you soon. Chris, look at those duckies. Uh, those are actually mergansers. They're not duckies. Um, just so you know. I like them.